herbal supplements are, are among the most controversial supplements in uh, on the supplement market. Uh, the reason for the controversy is the fact that herbal supplements tend to often not contain enough of the inactive ingredient. Uh, they're supposed to be standardized. In other words, when you buy an herbal supplement, you look for the standardized active ingredient. Unfortunately, a lot of these uh, herbal supplements that are supposed to contain standard amounts of active ingredients don't contain it. Uh, I, I'd estimate at least half the herbal supplements on the market, including such popular supplements as ginseng and others, they don't even contain any active ingredients. So when you take them, they're not going to do anything. Uh, however, there are uh, a lot of companies that are endeavoring to include the active amounts. You know, you got to go with a more reputable co uh, company. Uh, but you know, you can't discount the power of herbs either, because about forty percent of uh, pharmaceutical medications are derived in one form or another from herbal medications. And in many parts of the world, herbs are still used or or prescribed just as medicines are. For example, Germany. Uh, the German uh, medical culture, if you want to call it, uh, they, they recognize the uh, use of, of, of a lot of herbs as being very beneficial. And the doctors over there actually prescribe herbs. Uh, it's uh, more useful in Germany because the, the equivalent of the German FDA is very strict. In other words, if they catch any company producing, let's say, an herbal supplement that doesn't contain the active ingredients, that company is fined and put out of business. So when a doctor in Germany prescribes an herb to treat any type of illness or medical problem, he could be pretty well assured that that herbal supplement contains the active ingredients it's supposed to contain. Uh, the same, unfortunately, can't be said for a lot of the herbal supplements in the United States. But, you know, again, if you go with a good company and, and if you really want to know the, uh, if you're still questioning the validity of the supplement, you can contact the company and ask for a uh, analysis of the supplement to, to ensure that it contains the uh, required active ingredients to produce the desired effects. Now, uh, as I said, these uh, herbal supplements, some of them exert pretty powerful effects. There's a class of herbal supplements called adoptogens. Adoptogen is a general term referring to a reduction in stress. Uh, uh, it, well, I should let, modify that by saying uh, a reduction in the way uh, the body uh, reacts to stress. In other words, when you take these adaptogenic herbs, it modifies your stress response so you don't overwork your uh, stress response uh, system and get stress-related illnesses. Uh, examples of adaptogens, are, a good example is ginseng, is a well-known adaptogen. Um, another well-known ad uh, adaptogen that's uh, pretty popular is uh, the subject of today's video. It's called Rodolia rosea. Redolia rosea. It's also known as arctic root. It's classified again as an adoptogen because it does modify body stress responses. Redolia is particularly effective as an anti-fatigue herb. Very, very effective if you have any problems with experiencing fatigue. Um, uh, interestingly enough, uh, it can be used for a number of purposes. Uh, it can even it can even it can even be used to, uh, for example, if you're getting off cigarettes. What's that, Bruno? Hold on. Bruno wants to say hello. Let's say you get, hey, Bruno, talk about Rodoli. Come on. Rodoli is very good for small dogs, right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, Rodolia, uh, if you're getting off cigarettes, Rodolia modifies the stress upon so much that it makes nicotine withdrawal a lot easier. That's a little factoid about Rodolia. It grows, Rodolia grows in the mountainous regions, grows in the upper areas of the world. It's in the mountains of Central and Northern Europe and in North America. Interestingly enough, it also grow, grows in the Isic Arctic, which is why they call it the Arctic Root. Indeed, according to a legend, Rodolia was a favorite herb of the conquering Vikings. They used to use, uh, you know, they uh, they used to uh, ingest uh, Rodolia and go on the rampages. <laughs> it gave them the energy to fight off their enemies or do whatever. Uh, it was also popular in ancient Chinese medicine under a different name, a Chinese name whose name, unfortunately, I don't recall. Uh, but Rodolia can, it, it, what it, how does it affect exercise? 
It can affect exercise because it maximizes energy uses, usage through, through creatine and ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, which is the immediate source of energy in the body. Everything you eat containing calories uh, that is capable of producing energy is eventually broken down into ATP in the mitochondria area of the cells in a, pro a process called the, the electron transport system. Uh, and uh, the Rhodolia also has a beneficial effect directly on, on uh, cellular mitochondria. And, uh, in, in conjunction with an exercise, it'll help to increase the, uh, the amount of cellular mitochondria, which is good because not only is energy as ATP produced in mitochondria, but this is also the site of fat oxidation in cells in a process called beta oxidation. And anything that keeps your uh, mitochondria healthy is going to be very important to the aging process because a major theory of aging involves a loss of mitochondria. The mitochondria are the powerhouses of cell. They supply the cell with energy. And when they check out, uh, you know, when the cells begin to lose massive amounts of mitochondria, the power, the energy supply disappears. And, you know, you know what happens if uh, if, you're, uh, if your electric's turned off, you know, the lights go out. That's basically what happens in cells that lack mitochondria. So anything that will keep your mitochondria healthy is very important to health. And muscles, by the way, and energetic tissues that, lose a lot, uh, that use a lot of energy, such as muscles, your brain, and your heart, they, they, the mitochondria is particularly important in those tissues. So, you know, keeping your mitochondria uh, strong and healthy is very, very good for general health and for the aging process, including preventing brain diseases and all that stuff. Animal studies show that it increases muscle protein synthesis, which of course would affect muscle building, and it also increase, increases the use of fat as an energy source. Some animal studies indicate that Rhodolia stimulates a protein called, or an enzyme called AMPK, which uh, actually helps your uh, muscles to use fat as a source of energy. That might be the mechanism of how Rod Rodolia helps your uh, body use fat as a source of energy. It also modifies the release of cortisol, which of course is a major stress hormone. Uh, in doing so, it helps to reduce muscle catabolic effects that may occur following large cortisol re uh, release. In this respect, you can say Rodolia is an anti-catabolic herb uh, because it'll help prevent, uh, by, uh, by helping modify the release of cortisol, it'll help protect your muscles. Mm -hmm. The existing studies on Rodolia, however, it should be known are paradoxical because of a lack of proper dosages used as well as the lack of proper standardization of Rodolia herbal products. In other words, a lot of them don't contain rosevia and salinocytes, which are the two uh, uh, most active ingredients. Uh, some of these products don't contain the proper amount. Many products, uh, in fact, many products claiming to contain Rodolia don't contain enough of the active ingredients, as I said. Uh, uh, and I'll get to more, uh, I'll talk about more of that a little bit later in this video. But a 2010 double blind placebo controlled study of 14 trained athletes for a month showed that a dose of 170 milligrams a day of Rodolia increased plasma-free fatty acids and lowered blood lactate levels, as well as lowering creatine kinase, which is an enzyme produced in muscle that is released from muscle when the muscle is damaged. So lowering of creatine kinase would indicate less muscle damage after exercise if you take Rodolia. However, most of the human studies that examine the ergogenic effects of Rodolia found that it worked better in untrained rather than trained subjects. However, it does show considerable anti-fatigue effects in anyone under high stress conditions, whether you're untrained or trained. Like I said, it's probably the, the best anti-fatigue herb that I know of. So, so people that tend to get tired easy or whatever, Rodolia would really help them a lot if it's real Rodolia. One way that Rodolia helps to modify stress is by promoting the release of serotonin. Serotonin is a brain neurotransmitter produced from the amino acid L-tryptophan in the brain. Uh, it, all, it may also help to re relieve depression because when you raise serotonin, a lot of the antidepressant drugs work by increasing serotonin also and has an antidepressant effect. Uh, and uh, Rodolia may also blunt the effects of one of the two monomine oxidase uh, enzyme in the brain. What does that mean? That means by modifying the uh, uh, activity of monomine oxidase, you increase other neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine and dopamine, which will also add to a uh, anti-fatigue as well as an, a brain energizing effect. 
animal studies show that uh, as far as longevity, animal studies show that Rodoli can extend lifespan by as much as 20%. Now, you, you have to understand, these studies were conducted in worms. So there, there's no actual human evidence for this yet. It may or may not help extend, extend human uh, uh, lifespan. If it did, it would do so by modifying stress reactions because stress is a terrible, terrible killer uh, related to the uh, onset of diseases such as cardiovascular disease and cancer, the two biggest killers. Rodalia also, Rodolia also produces a slight stimulation effect that isn't as sharp as caffeine. A lot of people like to take Rodolia in the morning. I do that myself. Uh, when I get up, I take a 500 milligram capsule of Rodol of standardized Rodolia. I find, and I, I, I do drink coffee within about an hour after taking the Rodolia, but the Rodolia basically gets my brain going where, you know, within about 20 minutes, I'm pretty active mentally. In other words, I'm wide awake. It helps me, uh, but there's no stimulation effect as it, like you get from caffeine there's no sharp you know sudden stimulation effect it's a more subtle effect but it definitely gets your brain going so to speak uh, and now you, for that reason though uh, even though it's not as sharp as uh, caffeine and stimulating uh, the brain you don't want to take Rodolia at night because uh, it might cause insomnia because of its brain stimulation effect what is the dose range how much of Rodolia should you take the dose range is anywhere from 200 to 600 or six, up to 680 milligrams a day. And it, uh, any Rodolia supplement should be standardized for at least 3% rosevins and 2% salidricide, which are, are considered the most active ingredients. If it doesn't contain those amounts, again, 3% rosevins and 1% and salidricide, don't buy it because that means it doesn't have enough of the active ingredients. It should say that right on the label. If it doesn't say it on the label that it's standardized for those two, don't waste your money. You're probably buying an inert or nothing placebo supplement that does do a thing. Uh, interesting fact about Rodelia is in animal studies, it exerts anti-estrogen effects. Uh, I, I would not count on Rodolia. Uh, as a, uh, a way of controlling estrogen alone in humans. However, it's good to know that it does help control uh, estrogen. So, you know, it'll keep the estrogen at normal healthy levels or will help to do so rather than high estrogen, which can cause problems with both men and women. Now, as far as that, uh, you know, the, the problem with, with obtaining real Rodolia, that is, you know, Rodolia that contains the true active ingredient, that is a real problem. In fact, one study found issues involving possible inaccurate labeling of uh, Rodolia. This was a study uh, in England where uh, it was uh, published in 2015 in the journal uh, Phytomedicine, uh, where they examined 40 Rodolia products uh, 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 obtained through various British consumer sites. Uh, a lot of them are the same products sold in the United States. And uh, they found that 23% uh, of them contain no detectable levels of rosamine. None which is a key market that dist distinguishes Rodolia rosea from the other species of Rodolia. There's various species. Uh, two of the products did not contain any salidricide either, which is found in other species of Rodolia, including Rodolia rosea, indicating that, no, that, that no, again, is showing that no Rodolia was present at all in the products. Furthermore, 80% of the samples that did contain rosevin had levels lower than the traditional herbal reg uh, registration sample that was used as a reference. One supplement, instead of having uh, Rodolia, uh, seemed to have a substance called 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is converted into serotonin in the brain, also sold as a supplement. 5-HTP, because it increases serotonin, might mimic some of the effects of Rodolia, but it doesn't provide the anti-stress or anti-fatigue effects of Rodolia. So, uh, you know, that's about it for Rodolia. I think uh, that's all you really need to know. I, I think to remember the take-home points about Rodolia are that uh, I think of all the herbs that are sold, it's uh, by far the greatest anti-fatigue herb uh, that you can get. So, you know, if you're under stress and you're suffering from fatigue, or you want to take, take uh, use it in the morning as a little kind of a, uh, a uh, let's say, a subtle wake-up substance that won't hit you like caffeine, but it'll get your brain going, uh, I would say Rosevin is, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Rodolia 
is a very good supplement to use for that uh, purpose. It's not very expensive, but again, you always want to look for those key ingredients. Again, you know, which is again the rosevin and the salidricides. Make sure they have the standardized amounts. If they don't, don't buy it. If you want further information about supplements, exercise science, ergogenic aids, fat loss techniques that work, hormonal therapy, um, what else? What else? Uh, women's health. Uh, dozens of other topics actually subscribe today to my applied metabolics newsletter www.appliedmetabolics.com 40 to 50 pages every month more like a ebook than a uh, newsletter uh, no advertising strictly evidence-based truth you won't find this information on any website no blog certainly no magazine a magazines these days meaning the health and bodybuilding magazines the, the only good purpose of them is to line bird cages. They're absolutely useless. The information is crap. I mean, they've gone right down the tubes. They're, you know, somebody should just put them out of their misery. They're, they're just terrible. Uh, but, you know, you'll get the real information in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, which is based on my over five decades of study, over 42 years of, of professional writing experience. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post information on nutrition, exercise, medicine, and general health. Uh, subscribers can also send me short email questions through the email portal on my Applied Metabolics site. That's only for subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. So subscribe today and learn. Be prepared to learn. You will learn a lot. I absolutely guarantee it. It's all practical practical information that you can use today. It's written in simple English, no medical ease. I'm not trying to impress you with highly technical terms. And if I do have to use them, I'll explain what they mean. I don't take anything for granted. I don't, you know, I'm, I, I know how to write. Let's put it that way. So subscribe today. Uh, and if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter. You just saw Bruno. They made a guest appearance. <laughs> go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. They're great. Take care.